Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a concept of contact binary. I'm going to recreate this for you and explain it to you in detail using Universe Sandbox Square, and it's essentially a concept where two objects orbit each other until they kind of touch. Anyway, let's find out what it's all about. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually a simulation uh, that is already in the game. It's called Binary Earth's Tidally Locked. And this is what you're seeing. They actually start glowing really, really bright and orbiting each other really, really nicely and also closely. Anyway, so this concept was actually uh, something that I was trying to cover earlier, but the game wasn't really ready for this just yet because earlier simulations weren't very uh, good when it came to binary objects. And then a person by the name of Zather Ethern, and I totally mispronounced it, and I'm sorry for that. But anyway, this person emailed me and reminded me of this really beautiful star that we've discovered um, in the nearby galaxy of Large Magellanic Cloud. You're actually seeing it right now on your screen as we're zooming into uh, that particular galaxy you're going to see um well you're not going to see the star itself because it's not actually available in space engine but you're going to see the region where it is located it's located in the most beautiful and the largest nebula in the nearby vicinity known as tarantula nebula this is the closest region to us that produces a tremendous amount of stars it's a very active star producing region that we're going to basically talk about um but here in this region there's an, a star or actually a dual star, by the name of VFTS352. I'm going to create this using Universe Sandbox just so you can actually see what it looks like. So first, let's take a very, very, very large, very bright, very powerful star, similar to something like Rigel, for example. So we're going to place Rigel, which is one of the brightest stars in our sky, and we're going to place not one, but two Rigels in an orbit that's going to be very, very close to each other. So right around here. Let's see if this works. And maybe, just maybe, they're going to orbit around one another. So we're going to accelerate time a little bit. And so essentially, this is what uh, we've discovered in that particular system. So two stars orbiting very close, so close that this is essentially what you would see in real life. They would start uh, releasing material into one another and they would start sharing it. Now, these guys might actually approach each other a little bit too close and possibly cause supernova, uh, so I may have to restart the simulation. But VFTS 352 is a very stable dual system with two stars essentially touching and creating this kind of an A shape. And that's because they're known as contact binaries. They're touching each other, they're sharing material, and as a matter of fact, they're sharing up to about 30% of material between each other. And the reason why this is happening is because, well, first of all, they're very close to each other, and second is because they're relatively similar in terms of mass. Their total mass is about 57-ish, um, 58-ish masses of the sun, so it's quite similar to what I've just created, except that I think this Rigel here just lost a huge amount of mass to this other Rigel that kind of absorbed it. And this is what might actually happen in that system too. They might be just kind of sharing it and might be circulating around, increasing the mass of one star, then increasing the mass of the other, and so on. Now, this will actually happen for quite a long time, for quite a few um, million years. But because these two stars are so massive and because they're so bright, they're not going to lo uh, live very long. And they're actually going to create a very, very unusual um, outcome. There's going to be two possible outcomes, and we're going to explore both right now. But first, let's actually see what the artist re rendition of the system is right here. You can actually see it on the screen. It's, it looks a little bit better than what I've created in Universe Sandbox. And makes me wonder if I can actually do a better job by starting a completely new simulation and possibly making them orbit a little bit closer. Let's let's see if this works. If they orbit just a little bit closer to each other, will this actually be better? And the answer is no. That caused a very, very, very large supernova. Totally not what I expected. Okay, let's try this again. Maybe we'll put them a little bit farther this time. 
And we actually know that in that particular system, um, one single orbit of these two stars takes about um, a day in total. So about 24 hours to for them to orbit one another and to essentially uh, create what we know as a variable star. So if we look in the sky, we'll see them blinking because once in a while they are co they're covering each other and they're decreasing the total luminosity of the star system. Okay, well, this looks like it actually worked, but they're not really touching, though, unfortunately. Anyway, so, what is going to be the outcome of these two stars? Well, the first outcome is that they're going to live out their lives, and both of them are going to one day explode. And they're going to explode and create two supernova and two black holes. That's situation number one. These two black holes will then start orbiting around one another, and um, they will one day combine into one large black hole. And that's because we, we know that two orbiting black holes will interact with each other using uh, gravity, gravitational waves, and uh, they will one day basically collide and create a single very large black hole. So I'm gonna try to see if I can simulate this here. And this is essentially how we've discovered the, uh, the so-called uh, gravitational waves and unfortunately I don't think I did a good job here because my black hole flew away so maybe we can actually do it this way by decreasing their velocity completely and making them fly toward one another and combine into one mega massive black hole there we go so that might be the case number one but the case number two is a little bit more interesting case number two is if these two stars uh, slowly combine into one. So essentially, if with time, both of these stars come really, really close to each other, and instead of initiating a supernova, they basically become one really, really fast spinning star. So I'm gonna try to see if I can kind of fake this by doing the following. Okay, here we go. Kind of succeeded. Basically, I erased the supernova and created a very large, super, super fast-spinning uh, megastar at about 50 masses of sun. And eventually, because the star is going to be spinning so fast, it's going to initiate what's known as a gamma ray burst. It's something I will talk about in one of the future videos, but it is essentially the most energetic event in the universe. It is going to be so bright and so powerful that it's going to look like a very, very bright star from our planet Earth, and it's going to release a tremendous amount of energy. As a matter of fact, it's going to release more energy in a few seconds than our sun is going to release in its entire lifetime. And this event will uh, eventually result in something that will probably be um, either a black hole or maybe, just maybe, um, a neutron star, but it's going to be a very powerful, very energetic, very, very bright event that is going to... Uh, produce a tremendous, tremendous amount of energy. And it's actually kind of possible that if this event points at our planet Earth, it might also, and here's actually Earth just for reference, uh, it might also cause an extinction event. So we might actually have a complete destruction of everything on our surface of our planet if this points in our direction. But chances of, th of that happening are not very, very high. Anyway, so that's essentially a little bit about the system called VFTS352 and an idea of contact binary. Basically, two stars that are kind of touching and kind of sharing materials with each other. So it's a binary system, but a very unusual, very interesting binary system. Hopefully you learned something from, from this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about contact binaries and, of course, about our universe in general. If you've enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that subscribe button, because there's so many more videos coming in the future. And also come back here tomorrow, because you're going to learn something different. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And I don't even know how many times I've destroyed Earth now, but let's just say this is number 500. Maybe more. Well, who's counting, right?